Hi there, YouTube. Extreme Trains here. So we're looking at the final single pack engine, if that's what we can call it, in the uh, relaunched All Engines Go My First Thomas line. This one is interesting. Uh, it's a new character who has been very hard to find in Australia. You probably guess who it is. It is Bruno the Breaker. Uh, let's take a look at how he is presented, particularly given that he's actually a piece of rolling stock, um, but yet he's sold as if he is an engine, uh, and we'll do some comparisons as to how he plays compared to the uh, other engines that we've already looked at from this line. So, what are you waiting for? Let's do it. Now, the final one in wave one, uh, <laughs> the weird cargo trend continues. This here is Bruno the Brake Car. And you can see, if we look at the back again, we've got another kid playing with him, which is good. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at Bruno and see how this works, given that he is the only one of this first wave that is not an engine. Let's take a look. Okay, we'll do a 360 on Bruno. He is really chunky. We'll do a comparison with the other items in a minute. Uh, come around to the face. Again, great Bruno face. Very pleased to see that they've maintained his little lamp detail, which is cool. We've even got the railing here on the front, so they do have a different chassis for him, which is nice to see. Has the same detail with that kind of hump in it, uh, and it does seem like it's symmetrically detailed, which makes sense. Um, but it also comes around here to the back. You can see that all the details here on the side are printed, so we do have the black windows as well as the stripe and the 43. Got the little cupola here on the top with that little... I actually have no idea what this thing functions in real life. Is that a chimney? Might be a chimney. Someone in the comments will know. Uh, we've got the door here on the back with, again, the plastic, presumably from the roof, inserted in here. Same details on the other side, same details on the bottom, and the same wheel setup as for the other engines. You can see there's some weird little bits of plastic that have not come off the roof when it came out of the mold for some reason. Um, that is what Bruno looks like. If we put him down, you can see he comes again with the similar to the other engines. Same design of brake, of brake car, of flat car. Uh, he's blue this time with the orange wheels that have that wobble function. And then he comes with two more interesting items. A uh, piece of cheese. Okay, sure. Again, I feel like surely this has to be a reference to an episode, but... Yeah, no comment, no further comment. And then what looked like, I think these are supposed to be pipes, like a stack of pipes. Not that you would ever stack them like this. Um, but yeah, that this reinforce, reinforces my theory that they were trying to go for like a kind of square edged shape. And you know, this is a much straighter and then a round edge piece in each of these for like different tactile sensations. Remember we are talking about kids one year and up. So very small children. Um, again, this kind of goes together like this. Or like this is how it comes packed, sure. Uh, and then Bruno can Bruno can pull it along, even though that makes no sense. But what they have done, which I think is is good to see, is they have reversed his couplings, similar to his push along model. So when he runs behind an engine, he does run like this. So if we just set up a little train, you can see that he will run along, just like that. In terms of a comparison between engines here, you can see that Bruno is very large, and that's why he feels, I mean, there's probably more plastic in him, to be frank, but he also feels a lot more substantial than Thomas, and I think it's, again, because he's essentially a big block, whereas Thomas, you know, got these voids, we've got little cutouts. Um, so in terms of sizing, I'm not sure if that's entirely accurate, not that any of this is really accurate, um, but yes, you do, you are able to do this, which is nice. Um, and you'll be able to couple them together into a big, long train, which is cool. And if we just do that now, we can, because we have completed the reviews of Series 1. Let's bring all these in together, all the chaos. It's going to be a great chaotic train. It doesn't, wanna, it doesn't even fit on my camera. Uh, let's mix up the colours so we don't have any that are the same colour next to each other. And get Bruno on the back here. Look at that. Look, it does work. They haven't tipped over yet. But again, I don't know quite what the appeal is of, of this process, but you can do it. That's something you can do if you want to do it. Um, so, as we've talked about previously with all of these... Um, oh, this is the wrong one. I want this one. Uh, the pricing is 12 Australian dollars-ish to 15 depending if you get them on sale or not for these two packs. Again, for the amount of stuff you get, I think this is pretty worth it. I think Bruno is another great little addition to the um, the range. He looks very, very cute. Uh, I think he is 
coming in probably third after Thomas and Percy, but definitely before Nia. So if we do a quick little uh, lineup shot of all the engines that we've looked at so far in order of preference from left to right, you can see that, yeah, Thomas is absolutely the winner. But they all look pretty darn cute. So, yeah, definitely recommend these ones both as the, you know, prospective buyer for someone who is of the age group, but also if you're a Thomas collector. And again, every time I look at this, it just makes me really think that this Nia face is wrong. But I really, really want to see um, if this is a common thing across all of them. They're all printed just too low or whether they have actually made her face look like that. Okay, so that's what we've got, all we've got time for. The last engine in the Series 1 of these packs to review. Um, please let me know in the comments if you would be keen for me to keep looking at this series, in particular the James set, which I've seen floating around. Um, they'll be guided by you as to whether or not it's something I pick up now or whether we see if it can be picked up later in the future. That's a long video. That's well enough talking from me. Can't wait to hear you down in the comments below because that's all we've got time for in this Extreme Trains.